Welcome to This is a River by Isabel Rogers and James Taylor. Presented by Theatre Without Borders in collaboration with the Very Little Theatre and Pomona College Department of Theatre and Dance. Although this play is a work of fiction, it is based on the stories and lived experiences of the indigenous Cayenne, Kenya, and Penan people, part of a larger community known as the Orang Ulu, who live in the rainforest of Sarawak State on the island of Borneo in the country of Malaysia. We honor and acknowledge the Cayenne communities who hosted our research group during our trip to Sarawak in Long Liam, Long Naa, Long Pila, Long Miri, and Long Laput. In conversation, stories, song, and dance, they gave us an incredible depth of knowledge, emotion, and love. The myth of Lirag was told to us by the Sape player Ngaw Wan Ngaw at Long Miri. Sayu Kenat, Tera Makasi, Maraming Salamat, and thank you for being with us. This is a river. Time, in the present, in the past, in myth and legend. Setting. Myths and flashbacks take place in the Long Liam village, a Kayan community on the Baram River, Sarawak State, Malaysian Borneo. Cast of characters, all members of the Kayan community. Dance and music. Dance and movement in the play are based on Sape dance, the traditional dance of the Orang Ulu. Specific dances include the hornbill dance, also called Datun Jalud in the Kenya language and Hivan Jo in the Cayenne language. This dance, like all Sape dance, is slow and fluid, emulating a hornbill in flight. The dancers hold fans made from hornbill feathers. All Sape dance is accompanied by the Sape, the traditional lute like stringed instrument of the Orang Ulu. Welcome. We want you to close your eyes. To be with us fully, not distracted by the latest on Twitter or by my good looks. Clearly, that was a joke, but we're telling an urgent story. The least you can do is give, is give us your attention. This is a river. This is our river. This is our home. This has always been a river. This has always been our river. This has always been our home. This river, the Baram River, is located in central Sarawak. On the island of Borneo. In the country of Malaysia. And we are not just indigenous people. Not just the Orang Ulu, literally people of the interior, people of the Borneo rainforests. We are members of the Kayan people and we grew up in the Long Liam village. We are irreducible to one political opinion. To one stereotype of the headhunter or the noble savage. To, to one, one story of exploitation and environmental destruction. We are intricate. You can open your eyes now. But stay here with us. Listen. Aram, a woman dressed in all blue, stands, dances the Hivanjo, the hornbill dance. This is Baram.
Welcome to my death. Feel free to stay forever. In the old days, last time I was joy, fertility, purification. In the old days. This is Lirak. A hundred years ago, when they say this happened, our people no longer warred with the others, the Gunya, Banan, Iban, but Lirak performed as a warrior. He danced the man's single sape dance, <laughs> not the single man sape dance. Still, he was single. He dances, mimes the act of fishing, throwing a net into the river. Hey, Lirak. Hello. You're standing in the river. I know. It's deep. You're dripping a lot. I tend to. Come over here. You come over here. It feels good, I promise. Lirak jumped in. He stayed underwater for minutes after he lost his breath. He surprised himself. He returned daily to jump in again. A few months later. You want me to go on? Well, you're delicate, but also so strong, so powerful, so constant. I see a power in you too, beyond throwing nets and rowing and cutting trees. You can say no. You won't be swept away. That's rare. Oh, I've been swept away. <laughs> Love, I'm proud to carry you with a current, but I need you to do something for me. The time they spent together had taken a toll. Now Baram needed a baby carrier, but not any baby carrier, an avet, traditionally made, decorated with beautiful beads, perfect for multitasking. This is the longhouse. One of three at Long Liam village. All villages begin with the word long, but not for longhouse. It's Skyan for river. This is the part of the river named Liam. It was a strong community, which has its benefits, but to Lirak meant there was no privacy. There still isn't. And when there's no TV or TikTok, gossip is the best form of entertainment. Lirak enters the longhouse area. These are some of the many people who called themselves Lirak's friends in search of piping hot drama. Ngao, Buyang, Hunai, in the background. What's up, Lirag? Where were you all morning? You missed the planting. We needed you. I had to visit cousins at Long Laput. How many cousins do you have? Lost count. Give the guy a break. I have 25. I don't use my 40 cousins as an excuse to miss planting. Lirag starts picking reeds for the baby carrier. See ya, Lirag. So it's him and Paya, right? Oh, I don't know about Paya. What are you doing, buddy? Are you beating? Why aren't you leaving that for the women? Beating is satisfying. <clears throat> you have a point. Beating is my happy place. But why are you making an event? 
I've always been jealous of how beautiful they are. I don't care if it's traditional. I'm making one to carry crops. Booyang. What? What's the latest with, with Lirak? He's making an event. <laughs> oh no! Lirak? Is that Paya? No, it's no one. Right. You're going to have the baby. You're not even married. Well, <laughs> he'll be married soon. <laughs> so just tell us. Fine. I have a wife, but mm, my parents didn't approve. So I got married at Long Laput. That's why I'm always over there. And I'm moving soon. Really? Yeah. Maybe now. Uh, what, what, what did we do? I, I was just curious, man. He's not going to leave. Right, Lirag? Why have we never met your wife? We're still friends though, right? Baram. I did what you asked. Baram? Not even a ripple? I made you a vet. I told no one even when it hurt me. I cut everyone off, knowing that only you are eternal. Baram, I miss you. My bare feet are dry and cracking. My hair is dirty, matted. Sweat pools on my skin. It's strange what happens to me when I miss you. But love is strange. Let me be a father. I'm so glad you didn't give in. You weren't swept away. I couldn't be. Nothing matters more than you. Lirag gives Baram the avet and leans over for a kiss. Then he jumps in again. River sounds swell as he's swallowed by the river. He didn't go to Long Laput. But he did have a wife. Is she okay, Lirag? Lirag! Did he drown? Wouldn't you? For that kind of love? No. Lirag was never seen again. To be fair, we don't know if he was ever seen in the first place. Since this is a myth, myth or reality, though. We're all stories in the end. Waiting to be told in the hopes that will sit in someone's mind. And grow like a durian tree into something beautiful. Love. Commitment. Sacrifice. Lirag's story means a lot of things to us. We only hope that our stories will mean as much to you. In the old days, last time, about 100 years ago, when, when Lirak lived, the Baram was shimmering and see-through, pristine beauty. By the time we were born, it was a very different place, still loving and purifying, but now clouded with dirt, conflicted. This is where we grew up. When I was 13, I barely knew these two. Confused, I yearned for their company. A change of location to Emma's door, the family apartment in the longhouse.
Auntie Simo, what are native customary rights? Another scene appears simultaneously. On the covered balcony hallway that unites all the doors, a festive party, traditional music and revelry. Leah plays sape and Ajang dances along joyously. <laughs> No! Auntie, weren't you? No, I don't sleep in my chair. I simply take advantage of those who believe my age makes me prone to fall asleep at all times. You fall asleep there constantly. First of all, whenever we play the news on the radio. That's different. I don't want to give the Prime Minister the honor of my attention. Anyway, dear, you can't go out there. What's happening? You have to let me see it this time. I heard your question about native customary rights. That's more important than another long house party. It's a party? Then of course I can go. Mom and dad will let me. No, they won't. And if they do, I'll say it again. It's the same as it has been for millennia. Your elders make the rules. But why do we even live here if I can't spend time with the neighbors or take part in community events? Because, my little rice basket, we have our morals to consider. All those partiers, they're not bad at playing sape and nose fluid, but they're atrocious at protecting our lands. Our native customary rights our authority over these places. We have nurtured centuries. We trample over them and sell them away. So, I'll point the worst offenders out. But Auntie, Leah is playing sape, and Ajang is dancing, and even Jordan says he is the best in Long Liam. And they're starting the Datun group dance. The best? Don't you dare say that when you have a multiple award-winning dancer in your family. Who? Your Auntie Simo, of course. Who did you expect? Leia is Michael's daughter. He's one of the men they're celebrating for nabbing a job at the palm oil plantation two meters away. So? Of course she's excited. Her dad got a job. My friends, my prosperous friends, let us take a moment to thank the land that has given us food, drink, timber, and great wealth. In our dominion over every living thing and God has decreed, we must also have respect. On this day, we celebrate the land for being so fruitful and allowing us to benefit from a process taking palm oil across the seas to countries from Japan to America sharing the progress with our people who have been forgotten in these forests for so long. We will have more roads. Hey, more... stop campaigning. We're here to celebrate. <laughs> I'm not campaigning. I don't have anything to run for. I'm merely assuring that as your headman, I am fighting for development, maintaining your trusts. Oh, you in... have it. Now step back down from there and back onto the dance floor. Have more <laughs> Jeremy's Barak. Come back in. Oh, let me have one dance. If I'm old enough to go to school down river, why aren't I old enough to make my own decisions? But you are not old enough to go to school down river yet. I don't understand why you hate them so much. I'm not criticizing you, Auntie. I'm really not. But I don't understand why you need to hide them from me. You disagree with them on this. Okay, I hang out with Jordan all the time, but I think he should stop picking his nose. And well, we agreed to disagree on that. You're not gonna make me a bad person who's obsessed with selling our land to make money. Uh, 
Emma? What did your friend say? That Auntie Seema won't let me join your party because you're stealing our... Excuse us. Very sorry for the interruption. So you think your Auntie Simo can communicate, hmm? That you could solve all her problems by speaking for her? No, that's not what... No one speaks on my behalf. Maybe I'll eat all the fried fish for tonight on your behalf and you will see how it feels. I wasn't trying to speak for you. I was trying to start a conversation. A conversation about how unfair your auntie is being? Well, yeah. I think you're being unfair. I think you don't really understand why Leia and Michael and the headman believe what they believe. And I think you should talk it out. You are so lucky you are my favorite of my grandnieces and nephews. I thought Ethan was your favorite. That leaderboard is updated whenever I feel like it. You and I, my little rice basket, have the very same fire. After burning a few structures in my tender years, I've learned how to control it to our family's advantage. If I talk it out, using the slowest words and the most understanding tone, the headman will remember me as an irritating shrew. A problem who pops up every once in a while. And what was she complaining about again? So I don't talk. But I've seen him listen to people at the village meeting. To people, yes. To husbands and little brothers, nephews, boat drivers, boar hunters, fishermen. Auntie. Tom and Joseph's father have this particular flaw too. And we can only pray for little Joseph. That's the way it is. So instead, we make him feel a chill in the air when we walk by. We ignore and evade, and then he'll start asking himself what went wrong. What are they trying to tell me? No one can resist a mystery. I guess that's smart. I wish... You didn't have to be mysterious, though. You couldn't even keep a secret about who I had a crush on. None of my cousins will shut up about it. That's because it was a scandal. Don't you say it again, auntie! You can't make me do anything. I can even come over there and do this. Auntie Simo, caring and bullying. My father, Michael, devoted to palm oil, or at least to keeping us fed. And come on, Joseph, what a showman. A man with a bright white smile against all our other elders' yellow, who did everything as if he was wearing a well-tailored suit. We always thought he passed a lot of that on to Joseph. Who, me? Oh, I'm just the hitman son. That's right, the flyest boy in the longhouse with a door. A room in the longhouse, like an apartment. The largest doors expand lengthwise behind the common awning. So no one could ever tell looking at it from the front, that class differences exist. Trust us, they do. <clears throat> a door, longer than the tallest tree in the forest. My father was the hitman's son and his father before him. And who's the hitman? Only the most powerful man. Not always a man. Usually a man in the village who over time can even take on the role of the Mengong, the ruler of all Kayans. All villages used to be run by aristocracies, roughly controlled by committees who would kick out anyone who was irresponsible. Now, every four years, the Malaysian government decides which of us are the most loyal to them. And for generations, my family kissed up enough, mm, showed enough valor to be appointed. But, the government appointing our leaders, 
that didn't sit right with at least half of the longhouse. The other half supported the government's goals or just needed money and favors after some hard years. There was a gap between our families, as invisible as a glass door. Until you ran straight into it. And even at this Simu couldn't keep us from colliding. A rice field. The whole ensemble digs holes and drops seeds to plant rice. So, you've been in a plane? Mm, yeah, it was no big deal. I went to KL for a conference of regional leaders. KL, you know, Kuala Lumpur. Dad said he wasn't usually invited, but they were so proud of him this year for the new Sumling deal and driving up palm oil production. The view was astonishing, but I didn't feel like flying. You should have jumped out of the window with a parachute. Now that would feel like flying. Eh, no, I think that feels like falling and dying unless you fall in the water. Oh, Skydiving is safe and you can land anywhere. Some people have died or disappeared, but I wouldn't make the same mistakes they did. Did you get to watch videos on the plane? Oh, and how was the food? Airplane food is bad, right? Look, look, Jordan left his bike over here. I have the fastest way to plant rice ever. Aljan rides the bike with no handlebars, planting rice on both sides of him. See, it's faster and more fun. That's cool. It's not safe to ride without handlebars. One time a kid not using handlebars crashed into my dad and he grounded him for a week. Your dad can ground anyone? Yes, I'm king of the world. I'm the Viking and I'm biking. I'm gonna turn and do the next row. Try standing up. Hi, Emma, come over here. Oh. Is that your friend, Emma? Well, I can't right now, but I, but hi, um, I'm Jordan's cousin's cousin, so I've ridden his bike a couple times. True pros can stand. With no handlebars? I've never tried that. You want to see a true pro? They've got a true pro in front of you. The Michael Jordan to Jordan's Jordan. Ah Zhang falls off the bike. Are you okay? <laughs> that happens a lot. Don't worry about me. <laughs> I've fallen off a thousand things. Maybe you shouldn't brag about that. When I'm at school at Long Sun, I'll be with them all the time, Auntie. They'll be in all my classes. They'll be the only one I know, so they'll be my best friends. Doesn't mean I can't continue damage control while you're here. Damage control? They're not violent. They're not mean people. They just believe in progress. Progress, development, sounds nice. But a man who six months ago sold the forest away to be cleared and burned for palm oil does not respect the land. He respects it. The way you respect in a while to be consumed, then thrown away in all its chocolatey goddess. But you don't care if the tin of Milo prospers, do you? Well, no. Right now you are a sponge. Or, no, you are the roots of a tree. Strong, tough, pulling in everything them if you're surrounded by the words of that by our headman and his friends you will grow up believing it and you're right once you're at boarding school down river the elders will no longer make the rules or then I have to set you in healthy rich soil I'll stick my fingers in my ears when they start talking about politics auntie I'll call out anything they say that isn't right I'll do anything at this point to hang out with someone my age who isn't in my family. At your age, Miss Emma, I stopped for a week when the harvest was late. So I think you'll be fine staying with your family.
But I'll let you. Because I am utterly kind and giving. Only until the class is over. Thank you, Auntie. I will serve you so many extra helpings of ball. I will. I'll be watching. Hey, that's amazing. Hell yeah, it is. Heck yeah. It's pretty sweet to ride a bike when others are holding you up. Well, then, let's go then. I'm not going to let you fall down again. Um, I haven't talked to you a lot because my auntie always has me babysit my cousins. But since we're going to boarding school together, I thought we should hang out. I guess so. Welcome to the Ajan gang. <laughs> That's not what we're called. Guys, guys, I'm going to jump off and like right, land right on that mat. Ooh, trial and error, I guess. Well, uh, you win some, you lose some. You don't have to call me Emma. You can call me Hunai after my grandma, but my parents like their Christian names better. Mm, I don't. They, they sound weird. That's because you don't have one. I don't want something that was forced on us by the missionaries. The old religion was better. Ade? Auntie, Simo told me about it. Ade isn't better. Don't you remember great grandma Paya? Why are you talking about this? No offense, but this is boring. Wanna hear a joke dad told me? A joke? Oh my gosh, I know so many math jokes. I spend most of my time learning everything there is to know about math. That's true. We were cooking Samukung rice pockets together one time. Most of what she said went so far over. But you had a good time, didn't you? Well, I remember one. Why is six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. Everyone knows that. Yeah, but do you know why seven would eat nine? Why? Because you're supposed to eat three squared meals a day. <laughs> I don't get that. Because it's not funny. But you know that nine is three squared? Sure we do. Joseph, uh, why isn't your dad here doing Baladao, working together with all of us? I'm, I'm just curious. He's giving a tour of land for Sarawak oil palms, perhaps. Shouldn't we all be doing our part in the planting, though? Auntie Simo says that. He's helping all of us. You wouldn't believe all the complaints he gets every day. We need another road, a motorboat, a new generator. Well, guess what? You can't expect the hitman just to provide these things out of thin air. He's not actually a superhero, just the closest we have to one. The longhouse needs money for improvements for everyone. You need money to buy this stuff, and for that, you need a job. Where do you get a job? Sarawak oil palms. No one else is sticking up for our people and what we need. Why don't you try it and see how much everyone complains about you? Jeez. Okay, I was just curious. Sorry. I'll shut up now. Our mom and dad work for Sarawak Well Palms and... Shh! Lele, I get to... Our mom and dad work for Sarawak Well Palms and... They said if there was any other job, they would work somewhere else. And why is that? Because um, every few months, they have to go to a new part of the forest and burn it. They see all the animals fleeing, the hundred-year-old trees falling, and, and they know when people are coughing from the smoke here, that was because of them. Well, what's my dad supposed to do about that? What the jobs are there? That's natural, anyway. Everything dies sometime, even a hundred-year-old tree. If you are not allowed to clear land, why can we live here? What about all the trees we cut down to build a longhouse? Calm down, guys. It's not the same, and you know it. Mathematically, there's just a few trees every 50 years to build the longhouse, but the palm oil plantations are growing exponentially. 
but it's all right. It's all right to do that. As humans, we need to take care of ourselves. What about the rights of the rainforest? How, how can you be so selfish? Our rights come first. Just because you have the right to do it doesn't make it right. Of course it does. It is the same word. We live in this rainforest. We live off everything that grows here. So when you kill it, you kill us. Then why does your dad need work then if you just live off the land all day? Oh, are you saying my dad doesn't deserve his job? No, didn't you just say how how did how did your dad get his job? By being rich and having lots of meetings. How'd mine? By being strong enough to fell a tree and smart enough to control a forest fire. Why are you fighting about dads? I think Auntie Seymour would say your auntie is weird. She's afraid of my family. If she was in a good mood, she'd say that both your dads are victims. I know that doesn't sound strong and fierce and manly, but it's true. Don't speak on my behalf. Well, what should I say? Hello. I'll take those hats. I did weave them after all, and I won't give them back until you swear to maintain secrecy. About what? That I have strong opinions and I care that I am keeping my rice basket away from you for a reason, that I'm not afraid of your father. I hate him. Hate is a strong word. It really isn't. <laughs> I'm good at keeping secrets. Not a challenge when you never talk. Yeah, fine. We'll do it. Your fathers are victims and cowards. You can be both. They're victims because we're all victims of the past. When I was as small as you, we had never heard of money. The, the forest was rich and green, and wild birds, pigs, deer were everywhere. And the food! It was like a hypermarket, providing everything we needed. Even beetle leaf, which gave you the energy to make things right. That battle stuff is why you're always spitting blood. It's not blood, but I do like how scary it looks. I call it natural lipstick. It's as healthy as tobacco. So why did we start using money? What do you think? Did we choose to? Did we wake up one day really wanting iPhones? Maybe. No! What are they teaching you in school? Since the British came, we have lived in a rich ecosystem full of natural resources. No one really cared that it was our home. Later, webs of alliances formed between the Japanese logging companies that ignored licenses, the Malaysian government that hoped to become a first world country, and all those developed first world countries that create the standard to live up to and buy palm oil cookies by the ton. Then we switched to money because the forest couldn't support us anymore? That's right. And that put us on a path we couldn't turn back from, like the flow of the river towards dependency on the very industries that had run us into the ground. A vicious cycle getting exponentially worse. I don't know if I believe, you know. That. This is your time, maybe your only time to get another perspective. Why are your fathers cowards? Because it's easy to take the money, to aim for a better lifestyle, to float in the direction of the direction the river's already going. They could do more, but they don't want to upset anyone. We could find new ways to make money. We could rely on each other. We could return to the way we've cared for the forest. But we won't. And I blame Taman Joseph. You want to help us? 
make your elders proud instead of giving us places to aim our most colorful language in moments of anger? Do more. What, what do you mean more? Long ago, our people were headhunters, protecting ourselves from the Iban people, the Kenya. Auntie! Miss Emma, you know I'm all talk. If I was a violent person, some fools would have already lost their lives. Not every tradition is worth keeping. But remember what your ancestors did to protect their families and know you have inherited that strength. Before I could walk, my grandmother would sing me this lullaby. Listen well, my little rice basket, Grandfather's head hangs over the fire. Go and avenge us. Do not let us give you milk in vain. I know how to help. I know we have to stay and fight. Joseph, your uncle Jeremiah, Ajang Leah, your great aunt and uncle Judith and Isaac, they moved to the big cities, Kuching and Miri and KL. They started working for big companies and they forgot us. They never visit. Except Christmas and Gawai. Except Christmas and Gawai. They only came to eat and drink and play card games. They don't speak Gaia and they don't know how to beat Ikang designs. I think their heart's still in the same place. It's just, their home is somewhere else. Judith sends money back here. They don't care about our home anymore. So that's why I want us all to swear I will never leave this river here. Of course I won't. The next headman will have to stay here anyway. That will be hard for me. I was thinking of getting a condo in Kuching. Auntie, this is serious. I will never leave this river. I will never leave this river. I will never leave our river. I will never leave our home. I will never leave this river. I will never leave our river. I will never leave our home. I will never leave this river. I will never leave our river. I will never leave our home. I will never leave this river. I will never leave our river. I will never leave our home. I will never leave this river. I will never leave our river. I will never leave our home. And we all kept that promise. Shockingly, we've all stayed here without pulling each other's hair out, even though Joseph sometimes pushes it. Hey, I've gotten a lot better since then. It has been a long and winding road, but I say you're the main one pushing my buttons now. I am not. Are too. I'm not. Uh, I got you. You basically push your own buttons. Weren't we talking about something here? Oh, yes. <clears throat> I wanted to explain something to you. Head hunting. We didn't exactly lead with it when discussing our Kayan people. Maybe we were afraid. Maybe we thought you would be afraid. Maybe you should be. Our people were strong and brave, but also cruel. We'd stalk through the forest with huge swords, sneak up to men of other tribes and... To clarify, that's ancient history. Literally hundreds of years. And yet, it's the first thing mainland Malays think of when you bring up Borneo. Watch out for the headhunters! We're not headhunters. Not savages. But we were. We killed in self-defense. Why do you always make such a big deal out of this? But cut off their heads! If someone was threatening you, 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 would your first thought be, I have to cut off his head? Well, if he had cut off my mother's head, absolutely. 
You have no idea what their lives were like. And neither do you. Did we keep their heads in self-defense? My great, great, great grandfather had one of the largest collections of heads along the Baram. It contributed to our family's wealth, really. You go into someone's longhouse and they show you all these most prized possessions, Chinese jars, handcrafted musical instruments, and, oh, a bag of heads. Everyone can tell you something horrible their ancestors did, something they regret even though they never personally stole land or let people starve or enslaved people. This is one of ours. At least you can say we were thoughtful in our killing. That's definitely what I look for in murderers. I mean, our ancestors remembered everyone they killed. For years afterward, they could look them all in the eye socket. They were so proud of what they did. There was nothing more honorable than being a warrior. It was hundreds of years ago when slavery was legal in most countries. And the modern civilized people killed without thinking about it, without caring, sometimes without even knowing it. Their disease and poverty and conquest. We stopped. They're still doing it. I, I do still wonder about this though. After everything I've learned over time about the danger of development that you and Auntie Simo have helped me with, I wonder what makes a tradition worth holding on to. Is the... The mental uh, calculus? Yeah, yeah. I, I, is it just about whether the tradition does harm to others or is there something more complex there? How do you decide which traditions to keep and which to discard? You have to think about how everyone and everything is affected, including the earth. It can take years, and by then, maybe life has already changed. Including the earth. We swore never to leave, this leave the river. Then Ajam, Joseph, and I went to secondary school down river near Miri, and felt that we were starting to become those people who only visited for Christmas and Gawai. Well, I didn't. I knew I'd be the next hitman. But what's Gawai, you ask? They didn't ask, but we'll try. Gawai is a federal holiday. It's an Iban harvest festival, really. But the government thought it was a convenient time to celebrate all Orang Ulu cultures. And it gave us the entire month of June off from school. Two years after we swore never to leave the Baram, Ajang, Joseph, and I were back at Long Liam for Gawai. A summer day on the riverbank, even hotter and more humid than before. Ajang and Emma are carrying a fishing net together, untangling it as they walk. No, you're not getting it. Flora said it was a local NGO, all run by. They're giving them out? We have to be wary of gifts. Genocide and plague come bearing gifts. Samling, SST came to our doorstep with money and candy and bottles of tawak and a new roof. Listen to me. Trust me, they have the funding right now to make micro hydro dam systems, to install a few pieces of metal and give us free clean energy for the whole village. They're run by people like us who went to boarding school and left the village and found that making something of themselves was more like accruing big piles of money and losing their reflections in the mirror. They lost their eyesight. That's a strange detail. Reflections in the mirror, like they became vampires. Like they felt like they were losing their souls over time. It was an elegant simile that you, Dawa activist man, don't understand. I understand similes, but I don't need them. Why are you acting like there's nothing to lose from someone coming in? Someone coming in. The water. It's, it's a whole shade darker. Like fish from nicely roasted to inedibly charred. 
no sim lease. I thought things were getting better with less logging. But I guess there's more palm oil now, more land getting cleared and more runoff coming in. We can still catch something good. You haven't lost your touch with the net since last Gawai. We can still wow your parents and Auntie Simo will try to stop you from going back to school because you're such a good fisherman. It doesn't matter how good we are. Well, worst case scenario, we'll only catch enough for the two of us and we'll clean it carefully and cook a snack before the Gawai feasts and tell stories of childhood embarrassment around the fire. Remember when I broke my nose trying to do backflips off the edge like the, all the other kids? And then I kept doing it with a bloody nose? <sighs> We can still swim now, even in brown water. We'll shower off, shower off carefully afterward. I went to way too much trouble to ever stop doing backflips. But none of that matters. I don't miss fishing or swimming. Can't you feel it? Sure, I feel... But that's just like a patrol station. A pause for me. On the way to deep, seething rage at the people who did this to us. Do you feel the fish, the grasses at the riverbed, the baram, the earth withering and dying? Unable to replenish itself, cut off from its resources of renewal. That's why. I'm mourning. Oh. I'll mourn too. I've never been able to. I'm sorry to break your deep moment of silence, but it's true. All my life of travel in boats, with submitted mountains, with killed boars and stunned silence, and everyone around me has said, I feel presence, I feel a breathing. Mother nature is here, nature is speaking. Once I saw you pull a leech off your leg and take a moment to look into its eyes, wherever its eyes are, and respect its sensibility before releasing it. But I felt nothing. A tree is a tree. A muddy river is a muddy river. For years I thought there was something wrong with me, a hole in my soul. Maybe I was made of the same stuff as the people who sign away our forests. Maybe I was the same as Daman Joseph. You aren't like him. Even he talks about respect for the tallest trees and apologizes to, forest, to the forest that will need to cut it for progress, for the advancement of our people. You know that's talk, Emma. He doesn't really care. No, there's the same heaviness in the air when you and Auntie Simo and Daman Joseph experience nature. Something I'm missing. Just like you don't care about God. The adept rituals feel more meaningful to me. Like there's an eerie energy. The church is just a big open space. We can agree to disagree. I'm sorry you feel that way about nature, but I can't imagine living here and, and still... Yeah, but I don't think there's anything wrong with me. Not anymore. Well, I do. We do the same thing, right? Protect the place we grew up. We just do it for different reasons. How can you live here if you don't care about the bellion trees or the forest floors or Baram? Don't breathe in when the trees breathe out. Don't feel with them. That's what I'm trying to tell you about. What you said earlier is sinking in. You see our lands like a factory or a playground. You love them for what they provide us. Yes, but it, it does go deeper. I love the people of Long Liam, Naha, Long Miri, Long Pila, Long Laput, because they've grown up in the forest. I love how we cooperate in doing everything. I love our disrespectful respect for each other. I love how we're self-reliant. The flow of the river is in us. 
and I can appreciate that. Backflip contest, or will it disrupt the sacred waters too much? Hmm. I'm in. Brum, even choked and polluted, likes us to interact with her. I can feel it. Lucky you. It's true. You two were getting closer, and I was kind of a third wheel. Well, then I was the fourth. Think about how I felt. A car needs four wheels for structural support and assurance in case one of the other wheels fail. But I didn't want to ride a car. I wanted a bicycle. Anyway, I didn't need, a, I didn't need you guys while I was home. My dad grew in stature and importance every single day, to me at least. And I had begun to be invited as an advisor to his meetings. Emma and Leah at the side, an opulent location, Cousin Harris's house. Look over there, lah. That drink shelf is made from the most expensive mahogany I've ever seen but it was well worth it. I had the boys come in on a Saturday and take my tree down separately. Well, little Joseph, heir to the throne. Good to finally meet you now that you've grown to maturity. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Thank you, Cousin Harris. I am mature. I'm the hitman's most important advisor. He said- Well, Joseph, let's not forget the role of your mother. <laughs> you let your wife suggest policy plans? We have a radical on our hands. Oh, come on, Harris. Come on, I don't let Martha do anything. She is thoughtful and strong on her own. You don't let her do anything? Well, you understand how that could be taken the wrong way. Kayla, she's good to you. But the next decision maker will be this little man right here. He's mm -hmm. so nervous. You can sit down, Joseph. I'm honored to be here. Have some burak with us. My aunt's special recipe. Just chilies, rice, no sugar. Unwind. Celebrate Gawai Dayak. Ooh, your aunt must be tough. Oh, I see. You need to stick with the kids' menu, lah. I've got some Coca-Cola for you here. Thanks. I haven't had any in weeks. Uh, so, uh, Cousin Harris, uh, what, we here, what were we here to discuss? Your home is incredible. How many people live here? How many people? Mm -hmm. It's just me, the self-made man. You do know who I am. A senior executive of the largest Sarawakian logging company, Amanak 56 Timber Investments Limited. So, you've risen up so far from where you started as a tree fella, and my dad has indicated that you share the wealth. Your dad informs you very well. Amanab is the second largest provider of jobs at Kayan and Kenya house, long houses. And we're here to support a project to provide electricity to every door at Long Liam, free of charge. Wow, that, that's amazing. Well, what made you decide on that? Well, uh, it's been in the works for a long time. You actually inspired me to bargain for it. I thought, my son is always complaining that he's the only one who doesn't know anything about movies. He's, he's the only one that knows about movies, since he's the only one with a DVD player, huh? <laughs> I was just talking, Dad. <laughs> you know, five years ago, back at HQ, they asked me, why do you want to build a house there? At Long Liam, where people live in such poverty. Really? In poverty? And how did you defend this? <laughs> <laughs> you raised a kind boy. But he could use some education, la. Oh, he's going to secondary school. Son, look around at this house. Five times the space of the normal door with a drinks cabinet, electricity, a toilet that always works. <laughs> 
I have a Wi-Fi hotspot on here too. Trust me, we could go on for days about the differences between us. Your people live in poverty, even if the government paycheck makes the headman's family more comfortable. But I believe in everyone's potential. I was raised in this kind of squalor back at Long Miri. And I know everyone deserves the basic amenities I've been able to get. Everyone deserves that. And they deserve to contribute to the economy and be part of this country that has given us so much. Most of all, everyone deserves a choice. If I had wanted to run away to KL or to China or Japan to be a world famous painter, my family would have let me because we had the money to leave. So many of the people we care about don't. They feel they have to support their parents who are just barely subsisting on their crops in a bore a month. They're like, um... But it wasn't always like that. Auntie Simo told us once, she said- Joseph, that you know not to interrupt your father, don't you? I want us to discuss things, son. But don't let that woman's bitterness get to you. She lives in the past and everything she says is colored by nostalgia. Times are hard for the people of Longlian now and we have a duty to make things better. What I was trying to say was people today who have no choices, they're like all the elder women who were forced to be tattooed when they were children. They are proud of everything they endured, of their strength. They find some sort of beauty in our culture but they would never wish that on their own grandchildren. That makes sense, Dad. I just want you to know that I would always choose to be the next Hitman. Hmm. You'd be stupid not to, la. I'll pour you some more Coca-Cola. Now, regarding this electricity deal, we are confirmed to provide electricity for the whole longhouse in exchange for land previously marked as a reserve? That's correct. And we indeed have free, prior, and informed consent? Well, um... I mean, we've worked with you, which counts for a lot. I still need to discuss the deal with the community at the weekly meeting, but I trust that as long as I really emphasize the benefits, we'll get a majority vote. So, um, prior, we're six months out from logging, so yes, informed, I'll give a detailed speech. Which no one will listen to, la, especially since it's still Gawai. <sighs> I'm not a community babysitter, though. It's not my responsibility to pay them attention. At least this one listens. Yeah, I'm listening. Wait, um, what's free consent? Not pressured. Sure, we're giving an incentive along with the taking land for the reserve, but they can turn it down with their own free will. They'd be silly to turn down electricity and a chance to watch the Avengers over and over and over. Um, what will you do with the trees you cut down? Sell them, of course, to build skyscrapers in Japan. And I don't even know where else. To be honest, that's my least favorite part of the process. So it's a good thing it's not my business. Success can require sacrifice. Often they send the mahogany, that's a marketable term for all the trees, no matter what species they are, to make expensive furniture. Other times it just gets used to help pour concrete. Then it's discarded after one use. But hey, it's needed. They need cheap wood for that process. They wouldn't have any showstopper buildings without your rainforest and your people wouldn't have electricity without the demand for trees. Why is our wood cheap? Ha! He wants to major in economics now. In three hours, two bottles of Burak and one liter of Coca-Cola. I can get you an answer to that question. Settle in. The riverbank. Leia plays Sape sings in Cayenne, then switches to English. I will leave the river I must leave the river. 
Here and now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to burden you with this. I need to leave the river, the place we all love so much, and comb for a new life. Don't ask me why yet. And don't tell anyone. I'll tell you something. It wasn't Emma's veins to be an activist. It was in Joseph's heart to be a headman. But my family, we flip-flop. We frown on tradition. We say, it started with my great-grandma, Haya. My great-grandmother was a tattooist. No a tattoo artist, a matriarchal position of great honor passed on through generations. Immense tattooing power runs through me. I wouldn't describe tattooing exactly how Tom and Joseph did. When the last Kayan tattooist dies out, no one will be able to choose our kind of tattoos with homemade ink tapped into our skin, intricate, Subtle. At the same time, many of our aunties and grandmothers today say they wouldn't want their daughters to have these tattoos. They frown on modern tattoos too. The mermaids and hearts with arrows and skulls. Only women could be tattooists and only married women could be tattooed. The more tattoos, the more beauty, the more honor, the more class. It could take a whole day to tattoo an arm and the pain if you tried to do that to your child in Miri, that kid would drag you all the way to court. But we believe there was no better way to show our love. <sighs> you can disagree, but at least respect great grandma Faya. Let me tell her story. Her patterns dragged the spirits into submission. Imbued the girls wearing them with good luck and joy. Ensured them excellent rice harvests and shiny swords and gongs for their families. The healthiest children. And the richest, sexiest, kindest husbands possible. But great grandma Paya could never find that for herself. When she was a little girl, she glimpsed Maring. Maring, she glimpsed Maring, weaving fishnets in the big long house across the river. They had built no bridge. And we were all decades away from anything as fancy as a road. So she had to be content with just watching. She remembered him, but she never thought that years later, he'd be the one sneaking in her loft at night and courting her. Mostly by telling jokes. Aha, uh -huh. I told you I would go that way. Some small version of a Cayenne wedding ritual takes place. Paya and Maring sit. Neither were all that rich. So they weren't able to sit on a tawak or gong during the wedding ceremony for good fortune. As all the wealthy families did. There were no torrents of rice or rivers of burak, no marathon drinking games. But that suited them. 
since no one stayed at the wedding for very long, they were free to have a peaceful, romantic evening. Paya and Maring sit on the riverbank, hand in hand. Hey, um, you, you want to lay in my lap? What? Now? No, no, uh, it's something my parents used to do. You've made it sound so appealing. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not explaining well. Um, my, my father told me he used to do a la cosap, where, where women would lay their heads in men's laps and their men would groom their eyebrows in, in a romantic way to, to help them feel beautiful. Not that you need to be more beautiful, of course. You are, you are perfect the way you are. I, I don't even mean to hint at anything different, but... Oh. Did, did I screw everything up? No, stupid. My eyebrows are getting bushy. I'm actually growing a, a bit of a unibrow. <laughs> you know what? Go ahead. You'll always make traditions feel new. Well, this is more difficult than I expected. It's like they grow back instantly. <sighs> Be sure to get that unibrow. There's something I need to tell you. You've already named our first child? Well, I have. We'll call him Maring. I hate that name. No. No, it is something else. You wish you'd married the headman's son so you could have an extra wide room and sit in a tawak and eat and laugh until your sides split. No! It's, uh, you know, when we're planting rice, the men fell the trees in the planting areas. They burned them. They even dig the holes to drop the seeds in. And we women, we are stuck walking along the path as if we were preparing for a dainty dance, dropping the rice seeds in each hole. It's boring. I want to try felling trees, digging the holes. Paya, this is unacceptable. <laughs> You know, I think I can handle planting some seeds, dropping some seeds in some holes. <laughs> That's absolutely not what I was talking about. They kiss slowly. <laughs> Tell me that was you. I can't make that sound. Why the hell would I? Adette boy. The old religion. Proclaimed that if newlyweds her would hear any dear cry, they must be divorced. If not, one of them will die. So, who died? <laughs> they didn't love each other that much. Well, I didn't hear anything. No. Maybe it was just a dying boar or a screaming man. Yes, those bode well for us too. I don't like fake people who sugarcoat the truth because they're desperate. So let's stop pretending. Go out on a high point while I still love you. Fine. We're doomed. I wish I could tattoo you, give you good luck, a torch in the darkness of the next world, let you bathe in the Telangjulan and pick up gemstones in the riverbed. Now, they were divorced the next morning. Ring took a long boat back to his home, longhouse as quickly as possible. They couldn't bear to be around each other as friends both remarried quickly. They were like magnets 
they attracted everyone. But to protect themselves from grief, they started to repel each other. What does it say about them? That they believed in the power of a dear cry. That they let it ruin their lives. Leah, I don't think that's true. Uh, Auntie Simo told me that. This is my family story? No, but Auntie Simo told me the divorce, it was just temporary. How does she know about my great grandma? It was a general rule of Adit Dipoy. People wanted to keep the rule, so they had a temporary divorce. And then they just resumed the wedding ceremony. But I. They must have believed so strongly that they felt they had to get a divorce. Because <laughs> otherwise, they would have separated on their own. They did marry others after that night. Maring wasn't my great grandfather. And that means it was their choice. Kaya chases Maring. I mean, there were problems with the old religion. I feel like we are much happier going to church. Just maybe this wasn't one. We've changed a lot, but uh, it's not all or nothing. We weave hats with Milo containers. We have metal roofs instead of woven leaves. We cook dishes with MSG instead of herbs that we've lost. I always thought Grandma Pia's story meant we'd become Christians to improve our lives, not because it was forced on us. But if Adet Dupuy never did anything to them, is it just another stolen tradition? Hey, don't get stuck in the past. There, there were days I couldn't get out of bed thinking about why my ancestors were who they were. But then I remembered that the past was not a prophecy. I don't have to be my great-grandfather. All I can do is go forward. I want to be my great-grandmother. Blessing others with good luck, spreading her artistry, marrying a man she loves. But I can't. The way she lived is slipping away. It doesn't have to. Then where are my tattoos? Leia plays a different sape song. Ajang enters in traditional warrior costume and dances. They install the electricity. They clear cut the trees. We graduated from secondary school. I started secondary school. We grew together and apart. Like with branches of a tree, you can never predict how that'll happen. And we all met up again. Leah got sent home from boarding school at an urgent longhouse meeting. <clears throat> Everyone, welcome to a specially announced longhouse meeting about... Uh, ne never mind. Uh, enjoy the rest of the performance by Ajang and Leah. And do know that there are CDs for sale of Leah's first album, Sape Sensations. Now we will begin the Longhouse meeting in earnest. First of all, I want to give thanks to God that we are all here, healthy and content. That we have been blessed with uh, food, water, shelter, heavy rains, and electricity. We are also blessed because Long Liam welcomed another life into the world this week. Solomon, son of Rita and Philip. Little Solomon is adorable. He sure is. We are here tonight to discuss exactly this. New life, new opportunities. Sometimes they come from unexpected places. There is to be a hydroelectric dam. <laughs> It's a magical word, hydroelectric. Energy that comes from the water. And this dam is to be called Baram Dam. 
Uh, please, please hold your questions until the end. <laughs> Malaysia stands to gain many things from this dam. This is part of the SCORE, the Sarawak Corridor of Renewable Energy. And not only will Malaysia now power itself with renewable and environmentally conscious way, it will also sell this energy to allow China and Japan to go green. They care for the earth and caring for the earth will make our country more prosperous. So what does this mean for us? We will move on to a new place, a resettlement zone, where there may will be many things that will be free because the government will be indebted to us. Money, electricity, water, longhouses. <laughs> We will have given them our lands, our river, things that we dearly love for the greater good. We all understand the Christian virtue of sacrifice. In this time of growth for the Malaysian government, we cannot stand by and refuse this sacrifice. What happens to this place that we built with our own two hands? It floods along with more than 25 other villages, 388 square kilometers will be flooded. Orang Ulu people live on much of this land, but that will be in the past and we will move on to a modernized, prosperous future. I, I support the dam. I have heard that 95% of Kayan headmen do as well. We believe in development and change for the better. We should not get stuck in one place. Oh, now, yes, Ajahn? Yeah. I think I speak for my friends and family when I say I'm shocked. After the time and energy that we've poured into improving our home together, the time even you have spent, Hedman, when you were not cutting its veins open, getting us electricity and roads into town. You calmly announced that we're flooding it, and that'll make our lives better? I thought about this carefully for a long time. All of us headmen have. But somehow your mind changed completely when you accepted that big check. Ah, John, we're all disappointed, but... Headman, you put new wallpaper in your home. Joseph got a new phone. We noticed. He's, he's not taking bribes. This is another conspiracy theory. My last conspiracy theory still applies. Governor Taib Mahmoud is a corrupt embezzler. Don't get distracted, Ajam. Speak out on the dam. This is so wrong. Sit down. It's just don't bring your boarding school feuds into this. You don't control me anymore. This is unjust. If you support the dam, it won't be as a community leader, but as a tyrant. Let's have a vote. Who here agrees with destroying every longhouse and... It's not a matter of agreement. Maybe you weren't listening carefully, Ajahn. This wasn't a matter of discussion or public debate. This was never a choice. I was informing you out of courtesy. The Baram Dam will be built. We will move. We will make this sacrifice. The government has determined what's best. This meeting is over. Hey, want to talk about this in private? Without fear of saying anything you can't take back? Let's do it. But they'll know that you opted for something easier and that you have something to hide. You don't want to discuss the dam at all. No, Joseph. If it'll shut you up, come in. Careful. Be careful. We're supporting you. We think this is foolish. Don't miss dinner, Ajang. I'm coming with you. There are more subtle ways to do this. Because you're the queen of subtle, auntie. You told us to act like our headhunter ancestors. I did because they were stealthy. I can't be quiet anymore. Ajang will come out of there with a black eye. I know it. I've seen it. He'll be a troublemaker and a pariah. And you'll be worse if you follow him in. 
Ajang, let me help. Joseph, you're my friend. Listen to me. Well, why? Why would you sign our land away to the dance? Except that you're already used to betraying us. Uh, you sure you don't want any homemade burak? Oh, you're trying to liquor me up in the hopes that I'd be happy and peaceful. Unfortunately, I'm not a happy drunk. You don't have bad intentions. You're, you're being neighborly, which I guess you've forgotten how to do. I'm the most neighborly because I care about Long Liam. We won't be neighbors when we were thrown here and there, left to fend for ourselves. Everything will be free. The government will treat us better than they ever have. I thought that was clear. I know what a broken promise feels like. I can see that one coming 15 meters away. Who's knocking? We're not answering it. I've given you enough. Answer this. Do you really, truly agree that there should be a Baram done? Or have you given in to peer pressure and the ringgit greasing your palms? Why do we need a dam? It's hard for me. I told you. I spent a long time thinking about this. I know you're a thoughtful man and you can appreciate complexities. The Baram Dam hurts us. But in the end, we are worried about something purely sentimental. The longhouses we built, all these ancient trees, the fish we love, we don't need any of it anymore. It's like missing a teddy bear. Malaysia is providing for us. We need to help it transition away from dependency on oil. Our world is dying from global warming, isn't it? But our river is a huge motor. What a waste it is not to take advantage of that. This hurts your heart. The global warming argument makes you feel better about making the wrong decision. But you know it's wrong. It's not wrong. It, it's, it's not even complicated. Oh? You've swum in the Baram with me? You've fallen out of boat so many times that we bought your life jacket. You sure seem to like it. But that's right. Uh, sacrifice is important. We don't do it enough. And I know this will help us so much. At the resettlement, we will be different, better. Here, we waste so much time weaving, carving, cutting trees, fishing. I don't want to spend hours in the field. I'm bone tired at the end of every day. My hands are rough and crinkly. The, the hands of a 20 year old aren't supposed to be crinkly. Have you ever held hands with someone from Miri? You have a girlfriend from Miri? No, I. it was more of a handshake. I, I'm saying their hands just feel like babies do, but for their whole lives. Like Ilipin nut butter. Just touching them made me feel at peace, carefree. Imagine having those hands. This is your greatest wish? Is this why you'll give up our lands to a watery grave? You want baby hands? What? Ajang, you're still speaking as if you can change something. The hard truth is, all the decisions have already been made. And I have informed the village out of respect. I'd appreciate it if you went back to your door and had dinner. And Michael must be worried about you. That's a lie. This are our lands, other native customary rights. They must have our pr free, prior, and informed consent. I am your headman. Don't call me a liar. That's all you do. You certainly don't lead us. Dad, don't, don't encourage. I didn't want to hurt you. But the Sarawak chief minister says our native customary rights have been extinguished. You should move on without slandering me. You should let go of me unless you want a bloody nose. Michael never taught you respect. Ajang, I support everything you're... What's going on here? Did you just break in? Don't worry about that. What was your dad doing to Ajang? They were threatening each other. Things escalated. Are you here to calm us all down? No. That man Joseph, how could you grab him like that? I um, wanted to clarify matters and reduce interruptions. The Baram Dam will be built. There is nothing left to fight for. Yes, there is. And if he's tired, I'm here to renew the fight. I'm okay. 
you can go back home. Don't, don't make this any harder. You don't need to protect him. You haven't done anything wrong. I'm protecting our lands. I'm singing the song Auntie Simo taught me, but was too afraid to sing out loud. Listen well, my little rice basket. Grandfather's head hangs over the fire. Go and avenge us. Do not let us give you milk in vain. The government will break every promise they offer us. So I get your hopes up. They're hypocrites who don't follow their own unjust laws. So why worry about breaking them? The police are immoral, corrupt, cruel. So why they seek their support? They don't respect our native customary rights and are starting to bulldozer for the Baram Dun. So we'll start blockading. Stand in front of their instruments of destruction. Destroy their dams with the saws we bought with the money they forced us to use. I can't believe you were my friends. I can't believe it's taken me so long to speak. Daman Joseph, what will you do? What will you change? We demand change. Do what you want. Just know that if you ever wanted help from the government for anything, you are ensuring that it never comes. No free clean water, no new roads, no clinics, no education. Do all these people supposedly behind you want to live in that world? That's a false choice. It's like blackmail. If you ever touch me again or trespass in my home, remember how many people support me. Remember that I am the leader. Anarchy will not be tolerated. You are now monsters and enemies to him. It's just like what happened in Bakun. The blockade site. What happened in Bakun? Its eerie power inspired us, despite our discouragement that Taman Joseph simply wouldn't budge to keep fighting. And this time, Auntie Simo joined. She couldn't stop herself from being associated with me, a proud activist. Even I came to the protests and blockades. I stood at the back and screamed like I never screamed before. My parents thought that if they didn't say anything about what their kids were doing, it would all go away. Stop Baram Dam. Batakan Dam Baram. Let our river flow. Damn the dam. Stop damn projects. Dam is death for us. Stop Baram Dam. Dam. Stop Baram Dam. It didn't inspire me, of course. I thought those three were against me back then. I like to pretend that I would have changed my mind if only I had heard the story of Bakun. Bakun was a river like this, over the mountains. There, the government built the second largest dam in the world. Immediately, the people's longhouses were flooded, completely submerged, buried under the water, and the people were styled. No, no, no. You were, you were resettled. Now electricity is free. Water is free. Your new long houses are free. What do you think happened to those promises? In Bakun, they had to pay for their electricity. They had to pay for their water. They had to pay for their long houses. They are still paying. In Bakun, families went into debt. Without the forest, they could build nothing. Without the river, they had almost no food. In Bakun, though they were promised 10 acres of land, they only got three. 
this wasn't enough to start a family. So many moved to the city. In Bakun, our Kayan and Kenya people had to go to the city and work. They became city Malaysians, civilized Malaysians. They drove taxis and worked as maids and loaded and unloaded ships. But most never wanted that. All they wanted was to live in peace in their villages. And the electricity, which, which would, would help, help their, their community, community, which they which would, would sell, sell to mainland Malaysia, Malaysia, which they which would they sell, sell to China. China. It never left Sarawak. The plan to send electricity to Malaysia and China was cancelled due to cost and feasibility concerns. And even in the cities, the people of Sarawak never needed that much electricity. So in Bakun, megawatts of electricity sit unused. They rot just like the forest does under that great reservoir. The dam may have increased the use of renewable energy in theory, but the rotting forest produced tons and tons of methane. You can smell the greed for miles. They wanted their river. They lost it forever. In Bakun, the people do not grow and prosper. Their children do not thank the government. They will never be rich. Let's tell them the worst part. They say one last thing about Bakun. When the river was dammed, it rose much, much higher than anyone expected. Much, much higher. No one expected the water to reach beautiful graveyard on the edge of the village. But it did. There was a great noise. And the water swallowed the earth. And the coffins in the graveyard floated to the surface of the water. Grandparents. Aunts and uncles. Nieces and nephews. Parents. Brothers. Sisters. Even. Children. The villagers' families. Their histories. Their ancestors. The people they loved. All floated away from them. Forever. Forever. Lira. Please tell me this will never happen to me. Please tell me you haven't been swept away by their promises, by their lies. I trusted you, Lirak. I thought I would flow forever. But now I know I'm dangerous. I could destroy everything you love, everything you created, ever, even your beaded avet. I could kill your people in your forest. Don't let them do that to me. Lirag, I, I need you. End of Act One. During the interval, chairs are set up in a row in the audience area, which is still the river. As the lights fade up, Emma and Joseph walk out and sit down. They look at each other, worried. Leia is late. Eventually, Leia enters and sits down in the last chair.
A year after the Baram Dam announcement, we took a boat trip. And then he came. And then he came up behind me. And I wasn't expecting it, so I accidentally whacked him with the paddle. <laughs> 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 That's how I was allowed to captain a boat for the first time because all the other capable men were out of commission. It's a good thing I was as cute as a baby orangutan. Otherwise, my uncle would have ne wouldn't have forgiven me. You have some serious skills. I mean, I could still teach you a few tricks. I've captained a boat 500 times. No way. Uh, well... I'm not great at estimation. 300 times. Oh. 100? 50? Mm -hmm. Okay, five, five. Probably five. My dad tends to claim captain. Can we not talk about him? I, I want to talk. Don't get me wrong. I want to talk. Whatever you want, Leah. You... Uh, it's just... I've been going to a lot of meetings lately, either with you or my dad, so there's not much to update you on. And we appreciate that you've been going to the blockades. Although it's kind of confusing when you go there and then turn around to tour another palm oil plantation. Hey, they are having to move everything because of the dam. It's hard on them too. And we want to make sure everyone can secure a job at the new location. Then maybe there shouldn't be a dam. Maybe. Did we crash? No, stupid. We're here. Good. Because otherwise I was going to tell you that I had been an infinitely superior captain. <laughs> it wasn't true. And yet, you still said it. Stop giving him grief. Or flirting. Or whatever you're doing. Flirting? Ew, that's disgusting. It suggests that here? Right? I, I don't know how to flirt with anyone. Hmm. You make a good point. Didn't I ask you to stop? I think about it every time. He wouldn't have liked that. My mom insisted. Don't know why she had to make the decision. Because no one writes a will at 21. That's why. What did everyone bring today? And Un zip your pouches. I brought a whole durian. <laughs> hey, that's so thoughtful. It was his favorite food. No, that's not why. It's because he stank in the same way. I'm serious, remember? For some reason, he never used deodorant. That's because the first ingredient of most deodorant is palm oil. I made the vow with him. You did? Oh yeah, you did. Oh. I brought beetle quid, the whole works from Auntie Simo, with areca nut, lime, and a big pinch of tobacco in a beetle leaf. He always said someday he'd try it, even though it would give him cancer, just once. He was such a thrill seeker. Have you tried it? I live with Auntie Simo. Are you kidding? Ugh. Not recommended. And I brought an Avet. Because to me, Ajang was Lirag. He gave himself for the river, and maybe it was worth it to him. All I know is how much he stole from me. Lirag, now played by the actor playing Ajang walks out and starts to dance, as before. This is Lirag. 
the best dancer in the village and the strongest man, although some refused to accept that fact. He was devoted to getting in trouble, jumping off walls under construction, practicing Kung Fu moves with a ceremonial sword. But one day, as he danced, he noticed something he had taken for granted. Leia plays the sape. As Larag dances, he mimes fishing, throwing a net into the river. Hey, Lirag. Hello. You're standing in the river. I know. It's it's deep. You're you're dripping a lot. I tend to. Come over here. You come over here. Save me, Lirak. I am beautiful, but not for long. I don't ask this of just anyone. I need you to save me. I will, but then you will save me. I'll have done something good. Lirag jumped in. He stayed underwater for minutes after he'd lost his breath. He surprised himself. He returned daily to jump in again. A few months later. You want me to go on? Well, you're delicate, but also so strong, so, so powerful, so constant. I see a power in you too. Beyond throwing nets and rowing and cutting trees, you can say no. You won't be swept away, that's rare. Oh, I've been swept away. <laughs> Love, I'm proud to carry you with the current, but I need you to do something for me. The time they had, take, they had spent together had taken a toll. Now, Baram needed a baby carrier, and the Avet wouldn't be simple to craft. The Longhouse, Nagao, Puyang, and Hunai enter and begin doing a variety of village chores. There are some of the many people who called themselves Lirag's friends in search of a piping hot drama. Now, Puyang, Hunai, in the background. Though maybe they cared more about him than we had assumed. Lirag, where were you all morning? We needed you at planting. I had to visit cousins at Long Laput. How many cousins do you have? Uh, lost count. Give the guy a break. I have 25. I don't use my 40 cousins as an excuse to miss planting. See you, Lirag. So it's him and Paya, right? Oh, I don't know about Paya. You're beading? Well, that's a surprise. I thought it was women's work. It's good to see everyone's embracing beading as a relaxing pastime. But why are you making an event? I've, I've always been jealous of how beautiful they are. I don't care if it's traditional. I'm making one to carry crops. Puyang. What? What's the latest with Lirag? He's making an event. Oh no! <laughs> Lirag? Is it Paya? No! It's, it's no one. Right. You're going to have the baby. You're not even married. Well, he'll be married soon. <laughs> Tell us. Fine. I have a wife, but my parents didn't approve, so I got married at Long Laput. 
that's why I'm always over there and and I'm moving soon. Really? Yeah, maybe now. What what would we what do we do? I was just curious, man. He's not going to leave. Right, Lirog? Why have we never met your wife? We're still friends though, right? Lirog exits. Like sound and evoke a change of location. Lirag runs towards the edge of the stage. Lirag runs frantically towards the river. Baram, I did what you ask. Not even a ripple? I made your event. I told no one, even when it hurts me. I cut everyone off, knowing that only you are eternal. Baram emerges, half out of the water and covered in mud. It's not enough. It's never enough. Lirag, where did you go? Lirag, I'm missing my source of gossip. Lirag, we've been looking for two days. Lirag, I love you. Ram, I miss you. Bare feet are dry and cracking. My hair is dirty, matted. Sweat pools on my skin. It's strange what happens to me when I miss you. Love is strange. Let me save you. But you can't. All this time, Lirak, you didn't do enough. True, you didn't give in. You weren't swept away. But you can feel it. Their cruelty and greed is bigger than all of us. How? What do I do now? Aram takes his hand, staining it with mud. You know. Nothing matters more than you. He didn't go to Long Lapo. But he did have a wife. Is he okay? Lirag? Lirag! Did he drown? Wouldn't you? For that kind of love? No. In reality, Ajang had been taking progressively more action. And becoming more and more anguished that it all seemed to do nothing. Still, his persistence amazed me. He moved in with me in my family's longhouse door. Which left his parents bewildered and frustrated. My family wasn't happy with it either. Ajang pulled out palm oil sprouts at one plantation after another, leaving the owners crying, My babies! My babies! An action, of course, I had nothing to do with. Leah joined in as much as she could, but she was studious and quiet and didn't feel so comfortable in the protests and blockades. Instead, she released two more albums for the anti-dam effort, and she felt uncomfortable because she'd always protected her daredevil brother. Two months ago, he drove to Miri in the early morning for a meeting with a local NGO. He was so excited. I won't lie, I couldn't go because I was a bit hungover. Mum made her Iban Tuak, like a sweeter burak, aka the closest thing we have to the nectar of the gods, to celebrate the NGO signing on. He never made it back. They said he was at a traffic stop in broad daylight. You couldn't be anywhere safer or more open. He was shot by assassins in an unlicensed car. 
assassins. He's not a king, not a prime minister. The police tried to investigate Michael since they knew Ajang's parents were upset with him. They didn't want to draw attention to another murdered environmental activist. He's not a martyr. He's just ours. But Michael was here, not in Miri. It was impossible to deny. Unless you took it as a ran random act of violence, which my father did. That's when I begin to see Dad, the hitman, for who he really was. Do you want us to go on? Yeah, we can. We we can really stop here. They they need a they probably need a fun interlude. Uh, maybe some sape. We've never talked about Ajang in public before. I was his girlfriend, but they uh, they grew up together. Leah, we're sorry. We thought you were ready to talk about it. Leah picks up her sape and plays. I have to leave the river, thinking in the Kayan language again. Why, what, why are you playing that? She's trying to tell us something. I have to go. Or at least try. Do you realize how much I gave up to stay here? I you, know I... Mm. I know I swore to stay. I know childhood promises feel sacred. But since I lost Ajang, it's been at the back of my mind. No matter how far we get, every day is a fight for our lands and a reminder of how much we've lost. Every day, more trees fall and horn bills and sun bears lose their homes. Every day, a new threat. I replay in my mind our land going up in flames or devoured by the water. The air is heavy with death and I'm tired. What does it mean to be Kayan anymore? Without the traditions and the everyday rituals that were stolen from us, just being Kayan means slowly disappearing? No. No. Of course it doesn't. It means being crafty and clever and sly and changing things to fit with what we have. You can't find a crafty workaround for losing the trees or the river. Well, you said it. We already lost Aja. You want to abandon us and the fight too? I gave up university to stay here. I could be on my way to being a math professor. Which is, as long as we know, is an instant path to international fame. Oh, cut it out. This is not a lost cause. A river isn't the land of death. Even if your memories can make it feel that way. We redefine what it means to be Kayan. We haven't lost until we've lost everything. You're so optimistic. I'm your friend who took away, I'm your friend who took way too long to meet you thanks to Auntie Simo. And I'm trying to make up all that time wasted and I don't want you to leave. I don't want to leave either. But, Hey, Numskull, tell her to stay with us. It's your choice. Emma, people have the right to do what's best for them. Squeeze them too tightly to you, they'll suffocate. You can go if you want. We can visit you. I don't want to go. But you have to, right? I understand. Sometimes it breaks you, but you have to walk away. 
I learned that from my father. A month and a half ago. The longhouse. Inside Taman Joseph's bigger, fancier door. The police report said that there was no way it could have been Michael and that he was followed by the by that car for miles and they linked the suspects with... I don't know why you're so intent on making yourself depressed reading about crime and violence all day. You lose faith in humanity. Because it's Ajang, Dad. We had our differences, but we were friends. You understand having friends across political divides, right? It's your political beliefs. If your political beliefs are strong and intimate enough, it's dishonest to have friends on the other side. You're avoiding conversations that would reveal how despicable you are to each other. So that's just what I think. Ajeng's death was a tragedy, but these things happen. So let's focus on today. We are finally signing the documents uh, for the relocation zone and learning exactly what the chief minister is promising as in exchange for the dam. After all they've asked, after all they're asking for us, it had better be amazing. You know what else I read that scared me that? Is this still about Ajang? Yes, it is. But it's your business too. People my age shouldn't be getting killed at our longhouse. It didn't and... happen here. It happened in Miri. It's notoriously dangerous. Crime is getting worse. We have idolized living in the city, the big developed city where they have the latest releases since I was little. And now it's a crime infested place where you can be murdered driving down the street. Every place has, it, has its pros and cons. What I was trying to say is, th they say environmental activists are often killed, especially in Latin America and well here. And palm oil companies and logging companies are involved. The media likes to find controversies and focus on the negatives. If it isn't sensational, they refuse to cover it. Dad, a week before he died, Ajang spoke at a rally I didn't go to and he spoke about you. He said what he usually says, that you've been involved in Raswa with all the companies and with the government. <laughs> and you believed him? Reading about it afterward, the timing scared me. The last time I checked, you were st still wanted to be the next headman. Uh, I thought you respected our family. I do. Joseph, hey, I need you to get over here. Uh, is this Emma? Your connection's pretty weak. Yeah, well, that happens when you're in the middle of the forest. Auntie Seymour was an idiot. She climbed up some trees on her own like she was 15 again and she fell. I was nearby, so I came, but I can't carry her on my own. Can you call someone else? You are literally the last person I tried. Most of them are at church, or at the movies, in Miri, or visiting other longhouses. Yeah, we, we couldn't go to church because we have a meeting with the chief minister, and, you know, he doesn't go to church. So. Doesn't matter. I just need you to help me carry her because Auntie Simo needs urgent... Uh, Emma? Emma? What did you say? Dad, Emma just called me and we need to go help Auntie Simo. I, I don't know where she is, somewhere in the middle of the forest, but she fell off a tree. We can't reschedule this meeting again. You realize the chief minister is offering Long Liam special benefits due to our relationship with him? But Auntie Simo needs urgent medical care. I don't know how long she's been waiting. I'm sorry, Joseph, but maybe she shouldn't have climbed a tree at her age. Now she'll need to pay the price. Maybe I should go by myself. I can't hold this meeting without my chief advisor. And you know how much the chief minister appreciates your point of view? How much he's already considering you in f the front line as headman. Can't you take a little time to help someone in need? Uh, we're already late. We cannot dishonor the chief minister. And if I go on my own, he'll consider someone from another family for next headman. We must go even if it means Auntie Simo's life. What would we get out of helping her? What? I mean, I'm trying to think like her side does, only in terms of what will benefit her people and her river and the way they want to live. 
why would I risk my own reputation to save someone who has been nothing but a thorn on my side, who insults me and those I love, who wants to destroy the projects that excite me? What kind of a self-defeating decision is that? Dad, you will let someone die for being inconvenient. I, no, but you have to understand there are consequences for your actions. Ah, Jung too. he should have known. What should he have known? Joseph Jok Jiao, you're not a child anymore. You can't walk away from this meeting. I haven't let you train under me for you to throw it away. Enter the forest. Joseph, you made it. I told you he would. This one's more loyal than he looks. Well, he usually looks pretty loyal to his father. Uh, I ran here um, and also drove. Can you not roast me? Tell me what I need to do. Carry my feet. Stop talking, Auntie. Don't strain yourself. Having to shut up will hurt me more than fall dead. What happened? She was climbing up. Don't explain anything, Auntie. She came out here to climb one of the tallest trees to get honey, since the bees like to stay in the highest trees. She wanted to do something productive and she was missing that nostalgic taste, right? She used to be so talented, they called her Queen of the Bees. Not Queen Bee? Don't ask me why. Anyway, just as she was about to plunge her hand in a hive, she lost her balance and fell about 10 meters down. Are we taking her to the clinic at Long Sun? Yeah, her back hurts a lot. And everything else too. So I'm just hoping she'll be alright. Auntie Simo is the strongest, oldest woman I've ever met. Oldest? You've got to stay quiet, Auntie. The other thing she said is that she knew a few other families had come out here to fell some trees and pick fruit. But when she cried out, nobody came. We're lucky that I was picking rambutan. Why would anyone... Because they can't stand her. Us. They think she's squandering our chance for development and free food. She's been an activist since birth. In the womb? Since in the womb. But nothing like that has ever happened before, she said. I'm so sorry. Why? Because... My father and, and me created that. We, we wanted what we wanted so badly that we turned everyone against us into our enemies. Scary, like drooling, brainless zombies. My dad even said he wouldn't help her. He refused to help? We had an important meeting and it was against his best interests. Well, here, auntie, we, we'll put you down in my truck. There's so much I regret, especially since I started going to the blockades. Good. I wish it hadn't taken someone's death to get you to go, oh, but that's good. I don't even know how, how, I don't even know what I admired in my father, that he was powerful and authoritative, I guess. He speaks with passion. He doesn't have his priority straight at all, but I think he cares about our people. Or cared. Even at your worst, you care too. That's why you were frothing at the mouth to defend your dad. But I'm expanding what I care about to people I disagree with, to the lifestyles they adore, to boars and trees and water. To you, Emma. We've always cared about each other. Yeah, but... He wants to get you two together. Not a terrible idea. Auntie, it is a terrible idea. Well, I wasn't suggesting anything fast, just dipping our toes in. You, you know? were trying to get us together? Joseph, no! One step forward, but two steps way back. I wish I could have found someone like him. Sweet and handsome. Power and privilege what an activist is. For the last time, you are hurt 
and clearly confused. Did Auntie Simo just call me handsome? And you. Thank you for coming here, but if you help Simo just to prove yourself to me, to have this conversation, that's wrong. I loved Aja. Oh, whoa, I wasn't using her. I care about Simo. She helped me grow a conscience. What I mean is, Emma, it doesn't have to be about love anymore. I, I don't expect you to love again. I think I love you, but more than that, I respect you. You're so strong, fearless, tireless. With or without Ajang, you go out there and scream for the rights of the river. Damn the consequences. <laughs> I need someone to keep me fighting. And you'll be close to the hitman. You could influence everything, make all the decisions, and I could take all the criticism. You still want to be the headman? Well, I was thinking I have more of a chance of changing things if I had proximity to power. Good point. Auntie Simo is still mad at me for disrupting her secretive activism technique, for making the headman think I'm a difficult woman. I don't think I have to be close to the oppressive power to succeed. Speaking of your auntie, we should drive to the clinic. We'll continue this later. Listen, I can't try to love anyone else, but I still love and fight for Baram and all the vivid life that makes its home here. After your heart has been broken, you have to believe in something. Give yourself something like I have. Like being a good hitman? Whatever works. But we don't have to be partners to stay friends or to fight together. Leia, you remember that when Joseph asked me out in the most uncomfortable and badly timed way possible? How will I cope without you? Who will stop us from bickering? Who will I tell cringe-worthy stories to? Who will tolerate my mangled notes on the nose flute and keep teaching me? Who will protect me from Joseph and his arrogance and his earnestness? Careful. You're pretty earnest to yourself. You grew up with everyone here. So many people care about you. <laughs> I'm not dying. I'll visit. Not too often, though. Yeah, I, I might want to stay forever. How will you leave? I'll gather up all my things. I've always been a minimalist and float downriver to Miri. I'm a hard worker. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get a job, maybe as a maid or even better, as someone's nanny. I'd like that taking care of kids, even if they belong to someone else. That's who you want to be? A servant? That's the only way they'll see you, Leah. Who do you want to be? I don't want to be broken. You aren't. If I try my hardest in Miri, I can go further. I could even go to university and study something like environmental science and music. But I can't stay here mired in memories forever. I'll become what they think Simo is, a bitter old woman. Will you still fight? In a different way. You know, I've never liked protests, so I thought I researched solutions. Sustainable palm oil and microhydro. And I keep releasing albums. And best of all, I follow Grandma Paya and understanding what our traditions mean. I learned how to be Kayan while living in the city. That has to be part of our future, too, where everyone was already moved. A hospital room. Joseph and Emma carry Auntie Simo to a hospital bed. How are you feeling? I missed you at church. You make singing the hymns an adventure. 
You never know what note she'll hit next. <laughs> How I feel is that I've been in here too long. I'm ready to climb another tree. Oh, please don't. You physically can't. Uh, no joke. I am so grateful that you're alive. I'm grateful that you finally found some sense. I heard you talking about how skeptical you were about Ajam's death, and you sounded as respectful towards the government as me. Dad. What are you hoping to siphon off of us? Nothing. A quick visit to check on one of my villages. I have a duty to protect their health and well-being. Hmm. Then why did you say it wasn't worth your time to save me? Auntie. I was hurt, not unconscious. What were the choice words again? Against your best interests. You are taking that out of context. I don't think she is. Well, my schedule just got busy. Let's start thinking of creative ways to destroy this bouquet. I, excuse me. How was your meeting with the chief minister? Was it worth it? She's not fine, is she? Her back will be bent forever. So no, she'll miss the rice fields more than any of us. I'm sorry. Is this a general apology for everything? For Simo. It is always in our best interest to help our other villages. Act like you mean that. How's the Baram Dam? Uh, Chief Minister Satim wasn't pleased with your absence. He says he'll consider another family for Headman unless we do something for him. What happened with the dam and the resettlement, Dad? It seems they've received too much vitriol, too many denunciations, too many blockades, along with reports of corruption and murder. The project's too sensitive. They're putting it on hold. Dad, this, this may feel wrong to you, but it is so right for us. We could never live with being the ones who buried so many longhouses, so many acres of forests. But this doesn't have to be the end. On hold is not cancelled. The chief minister still cares about the project. He wants to plant seeds of approval in the Orang Ulu population. And he's offering another chance as headman if you work on this project. What would that even mean? Plant the seeds. I, I want the damn did. You want our legacy to wither then? I want to be hitman, but not like that. Joseph looks back at his hand, which now holds 10,000 ringgit. First of all, that, that could not have been more obvious. Second of all, is this Raswa dead? Are you bribing me? You don't understand. It's a glimpse of what you'd get from the chief minister as headman, and the supplementary pay from Samling and Amanab that makes life much more comfortable. He was right. You were, you were another corrupt headman. My whole childhood was bankrolled by... It, it isn't corrupt. It's how things work. Shh. Don't make a fuss. If you want the honor we've had for generations, this is the only way. How did you get here, Dad? How did you con everyone into thinking you were respectable and smart and brave? Maybe only I was fooled. Maybe that was the reason for the chill in the air around you. Ajang and Emma were right. They were right and... You're letting all of us down. Your mother is so disappointed in her little boy who's thrown everything we worked away to live in the past with the wild boars, orangutans, and headhunters. See a new way to talk about the blockades? They're not protesting for the past at all. I'm not arguing with you in good faith anymore. What kind of foolish boy turns down money? Did you have Ajahn killed then? 
please tell me no. If you, if you just tell me no from the bottom of your heart, I won't have to worry anymore. You believe in conspiracy theories now. So why would you believe me? Because you're my dad. Just say no. I don't think it was you alone. You worked with people who talked about what needed to be done for the sake of development and quarterly reports and the national GDP. You, you wouldn't dare hold a gun in your hands, but when they suggested it, you didn't say no. You never say no to them. Tell me I'm wrong. You don't understand the gravity of Sarawak's future. I can never be a hitman. It's poison. It's all poison. Ghost let's go of the ring it. He runs away. A party is in progress. Joseph steps up to dance the man's single sape dance. <laughs> How am I doing? It's just amazing to have someone to perform this with again. That means she'd rather not speak to your performance. Okay, rude. Rice baskets. We are gathered here to celebrate a victory, no matter how inadvertent it actually was. Ooh. For the chief minister of Sarawak, has decreed that the Baram Dam is to be put on hold until it becomes a simpler and more uncontroversial project. And with your help, it will never be. It will be marked by protests, blockades, parties, and screams into the wilderness. Ay, 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 ay. Before we continue knocking back the block, I do have a brief story to tell. Uh -uh. Uh. Ah, uh, don't, don't groan and listen to your elders. <laughs> the river, Baram, appears. This is Baram. Forget the old days. Today, I'm still joy, fertility, purification. Just look past a little dirt on my surface. Joseph is all ready to be Larag in his dancer warrior outfit. But Emma appears, similarly attired. And this is Lirak. Oh, she was talented. Tree felling, boat captaining, and calculus on the side. She had a tendency to focus on what she wanted, somewhat obsessively, but let's be honest, no more than the rest of the inhabitants of this crazy village. Hey, Lirak. Hello. You're standing in the river. I know. It's deep. <laughs> You're dripping a lot. I tend to. Come over here. You, come over here. It feels good. I promise. Lirak jumped in. She stayed underwater for minutes after she'd, she'd lost her breath. She surprised herself. She returned daily to jump in again. A few months later. You want me to go on? Well, you're delicate, but also so strong, so powerful, so constant. I see power in you too. Beyond throwing nets and rowing and cutting trees, you can say no. You won't be swept away. That's oh, I've... oh, I've been swept away. <laughs> Love, I'm proud to carry you with the current, but I need you to do something for me. Now, Baram needed a baby carrier. 
But as you know, not just any baby carrier. A longhouse. This is the longhouse. One of three at Long Liam Village. It was a strong community which has its benefits, but Lirok felt the pressures of a lack of privacy. She felt constrained by her friend's curios curiosity. These are some of the many people who planted and worked with Lirak every single day and cared deeply about her. Don't get me wrong, they cared about her juicy stories too. Ngao, Huyang, Hunai in the background. What's up, Lirak? Where were you all morning? You missed planting. We could have used your muscles. I had to visit cousins at Long Laput. How many cousins do you have? False count. Oh, do you have more than me? I have 25. I don't use my 40 cousins as an excuse to miss planting. Lirag keeps walking to the edge of the longhouse, where she starts picking reeds for the baby carrier. See ya, Lirag. Do you think it's she and Joke? They would be such a sweet couple. I'd put her with someone else. She picks up a nearly complete avet. She sits down and works on refining it. Ooh, I love to see my friends refining the art of eating. <laughs> but why are you making an avet? I don't want kids, but you have to admit the avets are beautiful. So I'm making one to carry crops in. What? what? What's the latest with Lirag? She's making an avet. Lirag? Is it joke? I would have recommended Jeremy myself, but... No, 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 it's no one. Right. You conceived the baby solo. You're not even married. Well, she'll be married soon. <laughs> Hey, we don't judge. You want to know. Fine. I have a husband, but my parents didn't approve. So I got married at Long Laput. That's why I'm always over there and I'm moving soon. Really? Yeah. Maybe now. Hey, what did we do? I was just curious. He won't really leave. You robbed us of the chance to meet your husband. We're still friends though, right? The riverbank. Baram, I did what you asked. Baram. Not even a ripple. I made your avet. I told no one, even when it hurt me. I cut everyone off, knowing that only you are eternal. But Lirak was not alone anymore, for she felt the presence of two more Liraks with her. Through the generations and the ancestral world, they shared knowledge that made them stronger and softer than they ever dreamed. And this is their friend Ngao, and their advisor, Puyang, and their guardian lookout, Hunai, who would drown if she jumped in. Together, they make the water warmer, the journey more joyful, and they comfort each other even when water gets up their noses. I'm so glad you didn't give in. You weren't swept away. I couldn't be. Nothing matters more than you. 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 I believe. 
the river. I will be alone. I will leave the I will leave the river. I must, I will leave the Baram, but only to heal. I know I'll come back. I wonder what will happen to Emma and Joseph, the bickering pair while I'm gone. Will time heal their wounds or will the sacred waters tend to them? For that though, I need to give the Baram a sign of hope. I will give her my music, my story to help her grow stronger, to help her sustain. Don't worry, I have like five more sapes. This is a river. This is our river. This is our home. I will leave the river. I must leave. Yay! <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here with us today. Um, uh, as much as we want to do a colloquy, um, uh, please send us an email. We have some people from London. London, it's 3.30 a.m. over there. We have some people from Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, who got up at 6 a.m., Sydney, Australia, Oregon, California, and I'm in uh, Sarawak. Just kidding, I'm in Chicago. My name is Giovanni Ortega, I'm the director. Um, uh, wanna bring in, oh my goodness, Isabel Rogers, who is our playwright, and I think I just blocked off Jim Taylor, who's the other playwright. Let's, let's make sure you can come in, come on in. Uh, let's see. We got to make him co-host. We got we to see this guy. <laughs> hey! <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for coming today and, uh, and tonight and mid-morning. Um, and have a good rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Take care. Sayukanep! Terima kasih, terima kasih. Terima kasih.